That that is the difference. Effort. It is a very simple word that not a lot of people understand how far it goes mm -hmm. in proving that you should be somebody that people look up to. You, you don't walk into a locker room mm -hmm. and say, hey, I'm going to be the first female to play power five football. Everybody should listen to me. I don't really care if you're the first Swahili person to ever play football. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> unless you prove to me that you're worth it. I'm not going to give it two craps about it. Now, again, put in some time, get, put in, no, some yeah, time. put in effort. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like, and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. My next guest is somebody that's actually been on the program quite a lot. We used to have a weekly segment, which frankly, I really miss. It was called Upon Further Review, where we did sort of the, the uh, intersection of sports and politics. He has been on uh, one of our sister stations, Sports Radio 740, and now is on ESPN 97.7 out of Huntsville, the host of The Zone. We welcome back to the program Joe Hunk, thank you so much for being with us, Joe. How's it going, man? Man, it's good to see you. And uh, I'm not your employee anymore, so I can say what I want. No. Yeah, no, I mean, you can absolutely say what you want. I don't really care. I mean, that's, that's kind of the, the good thing about, about being up here in Huntsville is I just get to be a host and get to be creative and get to do social media stuff and all the stuff that, that I was doing in Montgomery, I just get to solely do. In fact, as we're speaking right now, my program director is sitting directly across from me. So uh, it's, it's, it's good to not have to be the, the final voice on a lot of things and I can just <laughs> do whatever I want to do. So I'm liking it. Well, I, yeah, you're kind of seeing things from my perspective at this point, but yeah, I do appreciate it. And uh, th to be honest, I always said what I wanted anyway you never like say no and well well because again you know you know with you guys being news talking with you doing news man i mean it, you saying what you want is what you want i don't you never want cookie cutter people to be saying cookie cutter things so if you're going to be opinionated you're going to be unique but you're also going to have facts behind it say what you want to say, man. I mean, that's, that's the whole genius of this. If I'm going to go on the air and I'm going to talk about something like, you know, Alabama or Auburn doing X, Y, and Z, it, as long as I have information and numbers to back it up, sorry, I'm, yeah. I'm going to say it because I actually believe it. Now, if I'm just pulling something out of my butt because I want to get a reaction, you know, like some people in the media do, then, okay, you can get on to me for it, but I'm not trying to be a shock jock. If I have information and I have an angle that I see is a different way of thinking, then absolutely. Let's go with it. Let's have fun with it. Oh, for sure. And that's one of the things I love about radio. It is a bastion, or at least always has been thought of this this way. And I think that it's mostly still correct, a, a bastion of free speech. But let's get no, into it is. Let's let's get into the story that I wanted to talk to you about. I'm sure that you know about it. Vanderbilt, they brought in a female kicker. So what happened is they had a couple of their kickers, which I mean is understandable. They're working out with one another every day. They're they're with each other every day. One of them got the virus and then they both got the virus and so they didn't have a kicker left. So they brought went to the women's soccer team. And ask Sarah Fuller, which uh, Vanderbilt has a really good women's soccer program. They asked her to come on and dress, and she was the first woman to play in a Power Five conference college football game. And it got uh, all kinds of praise from people in the media and all this adulation. This is just one example. We could go through several, but this is just one example of it. This is a tweet from Hillary Clinton that you can see here. Uh, where it says, thank you, Sarah, for helping to prove that women and girls belong on every playing field, quite literally. But I think the thing that really kind of, I, I mean, for me, the reason that I think that w where we made a mistake is not that Sarah was on the field, because, you know, the coaches asked her to come on the field, and she did what was good for her school, and said, sure, I'll do it, and I don't have any problem with her. My problem with the whole thing is, just like Hillary Clinton was saying, that this like proves that women are the same as men or whatever. She kicked a 20-yard squib kick that rolled for another 10. And we're supposed to, it's the only time she was on the field, and she didn't even cover. The second she kicked the ball, she was already running off the field. <laughs> so I just, my issue is not in 
her playing or anything. I don't have a problem with that. My problem is we're acting like this is a massive triumph for women and proves that women are equal to men in athleticism. And I just don't think that's the correct read of what happened Saturday. Well, and you've got, there's a lot of layers to what happened on Saturday. And I think that that is where we kind of need to have the discussion to begin with. Um, should women be involved in, in football if they can do it? Absolutely. They should sure. be able to be, be involved in it. We have, uh, there are women football leagues uh, around the country where women play football. And if there is a woman that is good enough to play, absolutely. I've seen a lot of these women play and some of them have better work ethics, have better uh, regimens, workout regimens, better dietary regimens than any guy and that, that I've ever seen. And, and so those women absolutely should. We, we see a lot about the the first female in, in the NFL and the, the lady that coaches for the, the NFL mm -hmm. and, and for the San Francisco 49ers, she's actually from Kansas city, Missouri, and she plays in a, a professional football league for women. And she is a beast. And so, you know, there's a lot of women that can play, but you know, you have to earn it. You have to deserve it. And look, she just won the SEC championship for, for Vanderbilt football. She is a woman that is a very, very good goalie in college, uh, college soccer. And honestly, there may be an opportunity for her in the future to play for the U S women's national team. And if that is the case, have at it, because if you're that good, do it. Is she, you know, the, the comparison she gets compared to was the, the movie back in, you know, necessary roughness with Kathy oh, yeah. Ireland yeah, I've and, heard and the, she's not Kathy Ireland. She doesn't weigh 96 pounds and you know, all that. No, this girl had the body of somebody that could take a lick. I mean, if you see some of her highlights, she can take a hit. Now, mm -hmm. the part about this that has become, I don't want to say a laughing, you know, kind of being laughed at is that there are stories, there are uh, backstories, I should say, that are coming out uh, now from beat writers and people that are in the know with Vanderbilt. And, you know, for what she did, I really wanted her to get in. Uh, the problem was, and if you saw her warm up on Saturday, uh, SEC Nation was doing like a live feed of her warming up mm -hmm. and every single one of her kicks were coming off her foot low. And in soccer, that's fine because when you hit, when you kick a soccer ball, it starts low and it, it eventually goes up. But for a football, you don't want that to happen. And mm -hmm. so she was kicking like a soccer kicker would kick a soccer ball, not like a football player would kick a football and like a kicker, a putter would. I honestly feared that if she were to have gotten in the game in a field goal situation for Vanderbilt, that the kick would have came off low and it would have got blocked. That's that's from yeah. what I watched and warm ups on it. And so I started right, seeing which would that be on a Saturday. concern, even if it were a male soccer player. Oh, that can, absolutely. Because they're used to kicking a soccer ball. Absolutely. And the way that you kick one is you do, you start it off low and it goes and it starts and it elevates. It's kind of like, you'll see it a lot of times with uh, a golf ball or something along those lines, the trajectory is just a little bit different, mm -hmm. but you know, and, and we've seen stories of men that have tried to, to kick footballs and it just doesn't work out. It's because again, low trajectory, they're hitting their lineman in the back. They're hitting them in the helmet They're You know, the, if the ball is getting off their foot and, and missing the offensive line, it's going directly into the defensive lines hands like that. That is a soccer problem. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when I was a little kid, 13, 14 years old, my dad got me a golf set for, for Christmas. And the first time that I actually went out and, and played 18 holes, I've got the, the video of me, swinging the golf club for the very first time i swung the golf club like a baseball player it's funny because i'm you because know, i, I was a baseball, baseball player too and that's yeah. exactly my problem when i try to play golf i swing like a baseball yeah. bat exactly and so for me that that was my problem and i had to learn a golf swing heck i'm still trying to learn a golf swing <laughs> but I'm, i tried to i had to learn a golf swing mm. that was different from my baseball swing and so when i approached the golf ball i had to not think like a baseball player i had to think like a golfer and so with her that was my biggest fear what we've learned over the course of the last four five and six days is that there are reasons why she was kicking the ball like a soccer player, not because she is one, but because she never really even had the opportunity to practice. Mm -hmm. Like every time that she uh, allegedly from the, from the beat writers and stuff that we've talked to at Vanderbilt, 
she apparently was going out and doing Vanderbilt was sending her off to photo shoots and they were sending her off to, to PR uh, availabilities and they were sending her off to interviews and all this other stuff. So when she would try to go to practice and kick, she really never had the opportunity to because Vanderbilt was sending her other places because they knew what would happen the moment that the story got out and they were prepared. Their PR department and their marketing department was prepared for this. So she only got maybe one practice, maybe two practices through the week for her to actually, you know, work with the special teams and work with trying to get mm-hmm. the kicks off. That's a problem because Vanderbilt is looking like at this point in time, like this was a 100% publicity stunt. Right. And it was, you know, not want to say Derek Mason specifically, because I personally love Derek Mason as a guy and as a person, but Derek Mason was on the hot seat. And maybe this was a plan that either him, the athletic director, somebody came up with. This is just me spitballing that, you know, we do this, we do what we, you know, we get her out of the field, we dress her out, we have her play in the game. And the good publicity from this would help me keep my job. That's the thought process that I have. Which, spoiler of, of somebody alert, who, didn't work. No, no, it didn't work at all. Because when you get just drummed like the way that they did uh, against Missouri and you don't even score a point, yeah, the next day he gets fired. And mm-hmm. so, you know, there's some question marks with this. And so I want to see what happens this weekend because she's still on the roster She's still the only kicker on the depth chart. Are they going to get in the end zone for her to potentially kick a field goal? And hopefully over the course of the next of the last five and six days, getting ready for this game, she's actually had the opportunity to work with the special teams coordinator, the, the, which will help her with her kicking. And she can learn how to be a kicker, not a soccer player. And if she does then okay, that's a different ball game going into Saturday, mm-hmm. but last Saturday, that looked 100% like a publicity stunt. Well, and that was one thing, because you started with this, and I think it was a good place to start because it's a sentiment I share. Joe, one of the things that I love about sports is it's a meritocracy, which is, frankly, not that dissimilar to my political stance on things. It should be based on merit. If she goes out Saturday and nails a 35-yard field goal, I mean, I'll be the first person to stand up and applaud. Yeah, if, well, and it, look, if you can do it, then great. But based on everything we've seen so far and what you were talking about, it seems as though she was not put into the game because they believed she had the potential to do that. She was put in the game because she was a girl and that was going to give them good publicity. I mean, they also have a male soccer team and didn't go to them to ask if they had anybody that they could use. And like you said, the whole thing was ba- basically a week-long press gaggle for her. Well, so and, this is the and, problem. Well, and okay, so the, the biggest problem with this, and, and there's other problems that, that go along with this, mm-hmm. is if I'm if I'm somebody that is watching right now and I am a beat writer and, and I am like a, a a writer that that does like an opinion piece or maybe does these deep dive pieces, I want to talk to her. I want to know because after the game. She was amazing on the microphone. She was, you know, your dreams can come true if you work hard enough, you know, all this other stuff, which is 100% true. If you work your tail off, there will be opportunities in your life that pop up that you had no idea was was even in the plans. Mm. But was this a dream come true for her? Other than the idea of, of breaking the glass ceiling of women being able to play college football, Was this a dream? Did she look at her dad or her mom when she was four years old and said, I want to play football. I want to kick. And somebody says, you can't do that. You're a girl. And she said, no, I'm eventually going to want to do this. Was that story? Is that story there? If it is college game day, get it. CNN, Fox, one of these places, get it. Let us know this story. Teach us about Mm -hmm. this because to me, this looks like she was a person chosen and she's going to be the representative of this i've heard people that have said jackie robinson this is the jackie robinson of of women's sports for her to do this time out no jackie robinson was one of the greatest negro league baseball players of all time he was selected by the loss or the brooklyn dodgers at the time Mm. but because of his poise for his ability to withstand the pressure 
and his ability to also perform on this stage. And he became an NL MVP. He became a world champion Mm -hmm. and he became a major league baseball hall of famer because he was so good that they could not overlook him. The equivalent of that, if you were a female, would be a female playing quarterback in the college football level or the NFL level and turning around and becoming the NL, the, the MVP of the National Football League or the Offensive Player of the Year because you were so good. Not because, and your stats are so good that nobody can ignore you. Mm -hmm. You don't become the special teams player of the week for the SEC just because you were a female that came out there. And that's what exactly what happened. And and that's what irritates me about it. You know, it's so funny that you brought up Jackie Robinson. Uh, I was actually reading, and this happened earlier this year. You're not a political guy, so you probably didn't know about this. There was an argument made in the book White Fragility, which is like basically it's trying to make the case for why affirmative action is a good policy. It brings up Jackie Robinson and and basically said that uh, Jackie Robinson was he was put on the Dodgers just because he was a black person and he couldn't really make it in the majors. I'm like, no baseball fan believes that. Regardless no. of color of skin, regardless of political affiliation, there's not a baseball player in, or not a baseball fan in the world that believes that Jackie Robinson was not allowed in the major leagues because he wasn't a good enough player. Well, and no, that's, because that's the difference here. Well, Jackie th- that Robinson, is the difference. Sorry, Jackie Robinson. They put him in there because, like you said, he was so good they couldn't deny it anymore. And then the reverse is going on here, where it seems as though. Sarah Fuller was only put into the game because she was a girl and Vandy wanted the publicity from it. Look, Jackie Robinson in his very first season with the Brooklyn Dodgers had 29 stolen bases. He was the rookie of the year. He had 12 home runs. He almost batted 300 and he batted 297. He was the, the MVP of the league three years later. They don't just hand that to you because they wanted to, because Unlike 2020, where we really want to be accepting of of everybody, and and I think it's an amazing message because, yes, all lives matter, black lives matter, gender does not matter. I believe that. But numbers do not lie. And in the 1940s, when Jackie Robinson was coming into Major League Baseball and the Brooklyn Dodgers, unlike 2020, they did not want him. Mm. There was nobody... And again, if you were to say this in 2020, you would be blackballed from every sort of media outlet that there is. If you were to say, I do not want Sarah Fuller or any other female to play the in college football because this is a man's game. If anybody were to have said that Mm -hmm. they would automatically have been fired from their publication, blackballed from all media availabilities, never allowed back into a press box, no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. You had people tweeting, Oh, this is so amazing. You had celebrities and, and, and athletes and all this that were celebrating the fact that she was doing this, which it should be celebrated. But what I'm saying is it's totally different because she wasn't, walking out of her locker room on Saturday, afraid that somebody was going to grab her, kidnap her and hang her Mm -hmm. somewhere throughout the university, just to use it as a message that no other female should try this. That's what Jackie Robinson was dealing with. And that's the thing. I I have no problem whatsoever giving her accolades for a job well done. Once we actually see her do a good job. Once that happens. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm good with it. Look, if she kicks a field goal this weekend, I'm yeah. absolutely going to cheer it. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm going to retweet yeah. and be like, this right. is so awesome. Like, I'm going to be 100% supportive of this. But she has got to earn it. She absolutely has to. Every single bit of it. Jackie Robinson learned, earned everything. His teammates didn't want him in spring training. His teammates, once he actually made the team, didn't want him in the regular season. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, as everything was starting to shake out, then they started to accept him. Then Major League Baseball didn't truly want him involved. And then this guy was so good that he had to be named Rookie of the Year, which they did not want to name him Rookie of the Year. Mm -hmm. He was so good three years later that he was named the MVP of the league. You don't just hand that out to anybody. Any Braves fan knows how hard it is for Freddie Freeman to become the NL MVP the way that he did this year. Mm -hmm. It's totally different. 
Well, one hundred percent. And and that is a this is just a synopsis of what you were saying. But that's the difference is Jackie Robinson was working against a system that was trying to kick him out. Sarah yes. Fuller had a place made for her specifically that she was allowed in. That's the difference. It's the complete opposite. But I wanted to address one other aspect of this story, Joe, because I know that uh, I played a little sports, but not nearly to the degree, to, to the degree that you did at the high school and collegiate level, and, and you know more about this stuff than I do. Uh, apparently, Sarah did make a speech at halftime, and the I read the whole thing. We don't have time to do that here on the show. Uh, but it, basically what it boiled down to is she got up on a stump at halftime and was talking about how terrible it is that this team uh, isn't being enthusiastic enough about one another and they're not encouraging one another the way that the girls' soccer team does, to which my response was, yes, because they're not girls. Because if you've ever been yeah. to a women's sporting event, the teammates are constantly like standing up and cheering for one another. Like I've gone to several Auburn softball games and the entire game, all nine innings and, and more if, if they go into extra, the entire team is like lined up on the edge of the dugout cheering for one another, that kind of thing, which is fine because that's how girls interact with one another. Men don't do that. And if a it, take gender out of it for a second, if any guy who was from a different sports team, has only been to two practices the entire season, stands up in front of a team that has been doing two-a-days for the past, what, six months at this point, and he starts talking about how they're not doing their job and they're not doing good enough, the pipes will break because of how hard they're going to swirly that guy at halftime. Okay, so I've, I've heard about this speech. I have not seen the speech, but I've heard about the speech. I honestly thought this was a rumor. I really seriously did for, for a few reasons. And, you know, as you grow up, and this is a message for anybody, as you grow up, you have to learn how to be a leader. Some people, it just comes naturally. Some people just have that charisma and you want to follow them wherever they go because they have charisma and you just feel that it factor. Sure. Okay. That you just, you just do. I understand at Vanderbilt University, there are two athletic programs that probably get looked at a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. Women's soccer, men's baseball. Yep. That, look, men's baseball is legit, okay? Arguably the best program in the nation, arguably the best program in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Vanderbilt baseball is different, okay? So if a Vanderbilt baseball player is coming in and telling me this, I may listen to it may. And I say may because, because there's a little bit more to this. I am not going to listen to my kicker who was just brought onto the football team, regardless of gender, right? Just because she tells us that we need to do something again, regardless of gender, I'm especially not going to listen to my kicker who has been on this team for about a week and might have been at practice once or twice while we're working our tails off. Mm -hmm. The leaders of a football team lead by example first. That is where you lead first. You can talk all the crap you want to, but if you're not backing it up, mm -hmm. nobody is going to follow you into the fight. If you are working your tail off, you're throwing up during practices. You're busting it during sprints. You're in the weight room early. You're in the weight room late. You're in the locker rooms. You're in and studying film. You're doing every little thing it takes to be better. I will listen to you mm -hmm. because you know it. You may not even be the best player, but you can be the leader of the team. Mm -hmm. The other leader of a team is the best player. Because if he's working hard, he's doing everything we just mentioned, and on the football field, we're seeing it pay off. Right. And he he's can up get the numbers. He's putting up the numbers, and I can look him in the face, and he and I know that I'm not working as hard as him. I'm not putting in the extra effort as him. I'm not putting in the time in the weight room, in the film room, in class, and I'm not doing any of that. Yeah, I'm going to listen to him because he's putting in that extra effort, and it's working for him on the football field. Mm -hmm. I'm going to listen to you. Do not stand up 
in a locker room that you have not been a member of except for three days and try to tell me what we are doing wrong. Mm -hmm. No, because you have not been through the crap we've been through. You have not been through the summer workouts that we all coordinated together through text messages because we couldn't be around each other because of COVID. You have not been through any of the meetings that we have been through through this entire season. You have not been through the workouts we've been through. You have not done crap. And honestly, these players may see her as a publicity stunt. Don't try to give me a rah-rah speech. Mm. Jameis Winston is an absolute idiot. But when he gave a speech in the locker room the year after he graduated and he happened to be back because the Bucks were off, he won us a Heisman. He won us a national championship. He broke all sorts of records at my university. I will listen to him. He may be an absolute idiot but he knows what he's talking about and he's done it for this university in my field. Right. Right. I am not going to listen to an art major tell me that I need to work harder in my chemistry degree. No, sir. Well, I think that's a hundred percent correct because you want to talk about equal treatment for genders. I guarantee you if that, if Sarah is a guy, I mean, better watch her back. She's going to get beat up after that game. Oh, dude, they're telling, they're, look, look, I, again, I, they're telling her to shut the F up. Yeah. No, sit down. If right. she is a guy, he, they are telling her, sit down. Mm -hmm. Now, look, this also goes back to more backstories that we don't know. We're just going right. based on what we've been told. Look, she may be well-respected throughout the athletic, the, the athletic co uh, complex. She may be in the locker rooms all the time, or she may be in the weight room all the time doing her workout for soccer. Mm -hmm. She may be doing all this other stuff, but there is a huge difference in doing it for your thing and mm -hmm. then coming in and helping. If from day one, she came in, and yes, she had to do the publicity stuff. And then after that, she was working on the field on her own. Right. If she was in, she was going through and re-watching her tapes to see what she can do differently. If she's talking to the coaches or she's talking to the other kickers that have COVID and saying, hey, look at my film. Tell me what I need to do better. If she's in there day and night, I'm at least going to respect that she's trying. Mm -hmm. She still can't get up and give me a rah-rah speech at halftime of the next to last game of the football season that she thinks that she deserves it because everybody in the media and everybody on college game days talked about her all day. Cause you haven't pulled, yeah. you haven't proved crap to me. And until you prove something, I don't care what you say, what rings you have on your finger from a different sport or who you think is about to be your best friend. Cause they're hitting you up on Twitter. No. Yeah. This goes beyond sports, though. This, this is like straight to leadership theory, whether you're talking about sports or not. I mean, George Washington single-handedly stopped a rebellion against this country because he got up and spoke to his men. And the reason that no man there could argue with him is because they were there with him at Valley Forge. They knew that he was the guy that led the charge. And he had, you know, suffered and done just as much as they had been there with them every single step of the way. And that's how you develop a sense of camaraderie in a team. That's how you develop a sense of leadership and where people are actually going to take your opinion seriously. Because I guarantee you there's not another human being on earth at that time that they would have listened to other than George Washington because of what they knew he had done for them specifically and the sacrifices he had made. That's the Absolutely. difference. That, that is the difference. Effort. It is a very simple word that not a lot of people understand how far it goes mm -hmm. in proving that you should be somebody that people look up to. You You don't walk into a locker room mm -hmm. and say, hey, I'm going to be the first female to play Power 5 football. Everybody should listen to me. I don't really care if you're the first Swahili person to ever play football. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> unless you prove to me that you're worth it, I'm not going to give it two craps about it. Now, again, put in some time, get, put in. No, some time. yeah. Put in effort. If she may and look all this stuff, she may be doing this week. And if she is, please let us know More power but to right it. now. She looks like a publicity stunt mm -hmm. that Vanderbilt is trying or had tried to prove. And if it was Derek Mason, then it's Derek Mason tried to put over to make the university look good. And now her job is to become a kicker in college football. 
She's that she's not a soccer player playing college football anymore. She's now a kicker. It's different kicking a football than it is kicking a soccer ball. There's different techniques. There's different approaches. There's different ways that your foot hits the ball. Every bit of it. it she needs to be learning that this week. And if she does, I, I, then you're going to see instant improvement next week. No, she didn't get to kick a field goal in the game. The only time they actually got to kick off was the the second half. The second half kick off, and that was only her her only opportunity. Which, by the way, go back and watch that. She kicked it like a soccer kicker, and Mm -hmm. it, it. Yes, you didn't have the opportunities, but now, now that that she's getting bashed a little bit, and it's not all we love you, we love you, we love you. Now step on the football field with us and let's mm-hmm. see what you got. If you kick a ball deep, I don't want to see you running off to the sidelines. You kick a ball deep, you're going, your tail's going down there and you're trying to make sure that they that they don't score a touchdown. Right. Because if, if we exactly if these if the 10 guys in front of you miss and it's you and that football player and that football player runs past you because you didn't put up any effort. I don't care what your gender is. I don't care what you think you did for this sport. You, we are now all equal on this football mm-hmm. team when it comes to the way that I look at you. You are a football player. Now have the mentality of a fo- football and, player and not the mentality of a soccer ball player where, or soccer player where you're just going to kick it and roll. Yeah, and honestly, Joe, even if what happens is, and this is why it's important to bring this up where you were talking about effort, even if they return the ball, and she is the last line of defense. Every other Vanderbilt player has been blown past, and that, that person carrying the ball is returning it towards her. I don't even care if she gets her clock cleaned and winds up on her back. She better stand there and try yeah. to stop him. And if yeah. she does that, I'll at least respect her. Look, at least, at least some punters and, and some kickers who have no athletic ability whatsoever at least try to make mm-hmm. a tackle. Right. Look like they're trying. I want to see that. I do not want to see her kicking it and running it off the football field. Like, hey, I did my job. Let me get off here. Nope, 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 nope. no. You're a football player now. And if the, if there's an opportunity for you to stop somebody from doing something that could cause us to lose a football game, then you will do it. And that is how you get respect in this locker mm-hmm. room. I do not, I'm not giving you respect because you told me you deserve it. Well, because I, I don't care. Look, I'm I'm happy that you won your your soccer SEC championship yeah. and that you helped this the, this university get that championship and your name is on the plaque. And I'm look. Thank you for doing that for helping this university get notoriety. Now you now need respect, and if you're not going to get respect from this entire locker room unless you're putting in the work to become better because every day we get on this field, that's what we're doing. And we're not over there doing PR photo shoots and we're not over there doing interviews and we're not, not going and looking at the game film. We are putting in the effort because we've got to get ready for a football game on Saturday, not another interview with ESPN or college game day or FS one or whatever it is. It's game time. I don't care if we haven't won a game all season. We're going to act like we're going to win this one this weekend. I think that's a perfect place to leave it, Joe. If somebody is interested, maybe these people in Montgomery are missing your voice. If they want to listen to you, how do they, how do, they do that? Uh, 97.7 ESPN The Zone. You can download the app. We uh, I am on from 9 to 11 with Tom Abraham uh, every single Monday through Friday. You can also follow me on social media at Joe Hunk. Uh, Instagram is at the Joe Hunk, and you can follow me there. I keep everybody updated on everything happening uh, with what's going on with me in my life as far as the show and everything is concerned, and you'll get it all there. All right. Thanks, man. Appreciate you coming on the show. Hey, anytime, bro. All right. We'll talk to you later. That is Joe Hunk of ESPN 97.7. Hey, if you liked this video, then you should press the like button. I mean, that's literally what it's there for. If you liked the video but didn't hit the like button, then it's like getting great service but not tipping your waiter. Except liking is free, and so is subscribing and hitting the notification bell So if you're enjoying my content but not liking my video, there's really only one explanation. It's because I'm black, isn't it?